Welcome back to My Time to Fly. With a little bit of bad weather that we have going on and uh, stay at home order that uh, many of us are going through, I thought it would be fun just to take a few minutes and kind of talk through uh, my decision to buy, talk through the planes that we looked at that kind of led us to what ended up being the, the right plane for us and uh, talk about some of the pros and cons of each of those planes. Before we get started, I really just want to say thanks. I appreciate you watching the channel, and if you like what you're seeing, just take a second and click that subscribe button keep this channel going. Like I mentioned, today we're going to talk through the planes that eventually led me to the right airplane, um, and the pros and cons of each of those planes as it related to my mission. It'll likely be different for yours, but at least it'll be some food for thought. Do me a favor down in the comments, uh, just let me know, regardless of if you've bought a plane or not, uh, just tell me what models you've considered most and, and a quick why. Uh, it's, it's really great for the community, for, for everybody just to be able to see what, others, uh, what other considerations people have made, and, uh, and it helps us all make the best decisions uh, in, in our choices. Alright, so uh, first on the list uh, of four, we're going to talk about four makes and models that I really considered. Uh, as I look to purchase the first plane. The first on the list is the Cessna 150. I actually did most of my training in a 150. I even took my check ride in a 152. I had never been out of a two seat plane until I was done with my private pilot license. Um, and, and as I started looking at 150s, of course there's a lot of things that are uh, really beneficial about them. One, they're super economical. Uh, you know, they sip the fuel, you know, five, six gallons an hour. Um, and there's a lot of them around. So there's a lot of parts, uh, a lot of availability. Uh, and this is a little bit of a recurring theme. Uh, a lot of people know how to work on them. Uh, and very candidly, they have a very low starting cost. The buy-in is just not too much money. Um, so those were three of the main pros as I looked at 150s. Some of the cons, you know, a lot of times I found they're just not IFR rated. And, and as I look to pursue uh, my IFR, man, it'd be kind of foolish to have a plane uh, that wasn't rated for it. Furthermore, just to update it to IFR is incredibly expensive. Two, they're slow. Um, you know, I, I know building time is about hours and not distance, but if I wanted to go somewhere, man, that's the slow way to get there. And then, Third, uh, you know, they only have two seats. I've got a wife and two kids, and I want them to be a part of this journey with me. If only having two seats uh, would have uh, taken away from that a little bit. Now, I know they have some child back seats uh, for, for some of the 150s, uh, but my little ladies would have outgrown that pretty quickly. So that was really the, the final nail in the coffin for a 150, is, uh, is not having the ability to carry the whole family. So of course you take a step up from that. You know, I did my training in a 150, flew a 172 for a lot of years. I guess that kind of made the most sense uh, to consider next. Uh, move up to a four place, something I was comfortable with. Really the, the three key pros that I thought about 172s, well there's a lot of them, right? They're, they're plentiful uh, everywhere. They're well known, again, kind of that ease of maintenance. Uh, not that everything's easy to do, but there certainly are a lot of parts around and a lot of people who have worked on 172s. And then, of course, they had four seats. Uh, that's exactly what we were looking for. You know, the ability to, to haul the family around. Three of the cons that I found uh, most commonly in 172s, the really nice quality examples of 172s are pretty expensive. Uh, anything that's, you know, had updated avionics or... Uh, hasn't been used uh, heavily by a flight school, pretty darn expensive. Uh, right along that same lines, the cheap ones, man, they sure seem to have been put through the ringer. Um, as one of the most common flight school aircraft, it's very clear that high flight hours likely came from hard landings and flight school operations. Uh, and at the end of the day, uh, again, probably the nail in the coffin, they're a little bit too slow still for what I was looking for. So as I started to think about uh, a little bit faster aircraft, um, but still staying within a reasonable budget, I considered uh, Beechcraft Bonanzas. 
uh, you know, the old V-tail. Of course, there's a lot of different models of Bonanza. Um, one of the biggest reasons I, I started kind of gravitating towards a beach uh, was because of the community. There's a huge community of Beechcraft owners, and part of flying is being part of a family. Second, they had beautiful styling. Uh, absolutely gorgeous airplanes on the ground and in the air. And third, they were fast. Um, again, I talk about wanting the family to be able to fit into the airplane. We're just not fitting in it to fly around in circles. We want to go some places, so that was a huge benefit. Some of the downfalls of the beach, that they're just not the most economical, right? Most of them have big six-cylinder engines, a little bit more expensive to maintain. Second, the affordable options, they didn't have typically have uh, three updates that were, I guess, important to me. Um, one, they didn't have updated instrument panels typically. Two, they didn't have un updated engines. Uh, a lot of them had the old E-series engines with really low TBOs and uh, tales of expense in getting those uh, repaired. And then third, a lot of them uh, still had electric props, which I hear some people really like and others don't. Um, I guess at the end of the day, you know, an oil-operated uh, propeller is a little bit more what I wanted uh, because they're common and well-known. So then I, I really, you know, we, we, we talked about a lot of these airplanes in parallel, but uh, one that really started to come to the surface and just once I really thought through it, it just made sense, was the Mooney. Uh, the Mooney has, again, great community and support. You know, we have organizations like uh, Mooney Space and Lazar and Facebook groups and the, the all-powerful Don Maxwell. Right? I haven't had the opportunity to meet him or talk with him or get my plane to him, but I, I hope someday that I will. Secondly, they have a beautiful, timeless style. You don't have to love the looks of your plane but man it certainly helps keep you interested uh, they're you know just renowned for for being gorgeous airplanes uh, both on the ground and in the air they're fast and efficient uh, especially the model that i ended up purchasing the the c model um, you know they have simple systems manual gear hydraulic flaps uh, rubber disc suspensions you're never going to have a, a strut collapsed when you go out to the airplane um, they have engines that are, are pretty good on fuel. Uh, you know, I have a 0360, 180 horse. Um, it can cruise around, you know, nine, 10 gallons an hour uh, for planning purposes anyways, um, doing 140, 145 knots. Uh, that's really, you know, one of the most powerful pieces, class leading speed. Uh, you know, the infamous Mooney Zoom, hard to beat. Uh, and then, you kind of total that all together. It was a four-seat airplane for a reasonable price that goes fast. I really don't know how, but the value proposition of the Mooney, it, it continues to outweigh its cost. Uh, I think there's way more value in the Mooney than what the costs are currently showing. You know, there are, there are a few downfalls, and of course I thought about them, you have to. Um, you know, C models can be pretty tight in the back seat, I've got a three-year-old and a six-year-old, no big deal yet. Um, leaking tanks, everybody knows that they, uh, they're they wet tanks and uh, they, they can spring leaks, it happens. Um, I, in my case, I'm ready to work on it. If, if something happens, we'll fix it. Um, in other people's cases, they'll just pay for it and, and that's okay too. Uh, one, another downfall, there is just a lot of screws. When we did our pre-buy inspection, the mechanic that came brought a little snap-on driver, but it quickly ran out of juice, and my forearms paid for it. But still, it was worth it to get to know the plane. So clearly, the, the Mooney became the option for, for me, uh, for my partner who uh, I bought the plane with. Uh, it ended up being the right decision. I really believe that. Now, I hadn't even flown a Mo Mooney before I picked it up, uh, which, you know, maybe foolish but I tell you I've continued to fall even more in love with the plane for every hour I put in it um, and I'm glad I made that decision there were some other planes we considered 
you know, there's a, just a plethora of options out there. We, we looked at Comanches, specifically Comanche 180s, because we wanted something um, efficient uh, and a four-cylinder engine. Uh, the Beach Sierra we looked at, Grumman, Traveler, Tiger, Cheetah, we, we looked at all those AA5 variants. As I've likely made it clear by now, the Mooney was the right choice for my mission. Uh, it might not be perfect for yours, but I'm confident if you think about some of these things, if you think about what is right for your mission, and just keep looking, you'll find the plane that is. I hope you do find what's right for you, and especially hope you find your time to fly.